We're going to read out of Acts 9. We're going to talk about Saul, or Saul, right? It says, uh, in the Acts 9, the Damascus Road, Saul converted. Then Saul, still breathing threats, murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found anyone who was of the way, that's what Christians were called before Christians were called the way, because Jesus was is the way. <clears throat> Whether men or women, he might be brought, bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from the heavens. Then he, then he fell to the ground, and heard a voice to saying to him, Saul, Saul. You know, in the Bible, only a few people were called by their name twice. There's something to that. I got a message on that. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Goads are are uh, like cow prods. They're sharp, pointed edges. And they use it to pull, point and like make them go a certain way. Or they sometimes have a hook and they pull them. That's how you control the oxen, right? If you kick against it, you're going to get stabbed. You're going to get poked, right? You're, it pushes you. It tells you where to go, right? So he trembled and astonished and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will find and will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Right? And according to the laws of Moses, two or three witnesses, two or three witnesses. So there was two, and they heard, but they didn't see, right? An apostle is a man that's seen the risen Christ. Paul seen it. They didn't see it. They heard it. So they were witnesses. They, we heard it. We heard Jesus talking to him. We didn't see him. Right? So the two or three witnesses, the witness is true. Then Saul rose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. Spiritually blinded, and God made him physically blind. And they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and was... And he was there three days without sight and neither ate nor drink. He's fasting. He's blind and he's fasting, right? And it's a, a true fast. In other words, no water either, right? There's a regular fast where you can drink liquid. And there's a true fast, right? Nothing. Now, there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to street called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. So he's fasting and praying and because he's blind, right? So he's blind and he's fast. And Jesus said, He's praying to me right now. Right? And in a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias coming and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, have you heard from many about this man? How much harm... Has he done in your saints in Jerusalem? And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind who all who call on your name. And the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I should, will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. I know what he's done. And he's going to suffer for it. But I'm going to empower him to get through it. We don't get away with things, man. Right? When I got busted for murder, I went to prison. When I got, when I called out to God, try to help me when I was facing another criminal charges. Right? Then I still, I still went to prison. Right? We still gotta, we still gotta pay for it. Right? But there's, but there's salvation in the name of our Lord. We could be spiritually free in jail. We spiritually free when we're getting persecuted. And this is what he's saying. Like, he's like, I know what he's done. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid hands on him. And he said. Brother Saul, so now he's calling him a brother. He's like, he's not a brother. But when Jesus said, I've chosen him, I know he's going to suffer. I'm going to show him. And now Ananias say, Brother Saul, right? And sometimes we, we're going to question God, but we got to listen to God. And when God says the man's chosen, he's chosen. He's a brother or a sister, right? And, me, and he said, Brother Saul. The Lord said, Jesus, who appeared to me on the road as you came, sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there will, there will fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he rose and bat was baptized. So he had received food. He was strengthened, and Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. 
Immediately he preached to Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. And all who, who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates in night and he to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and laid him down to the walls in a large basket. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Disciple, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. Let me tell you, we all need a Barnabas in our lives. Send them encouragement. We all need someone to encourage us and to put us under the wing, right? And we all look at, at this is Apostle Paul, great apostle. But he had a Barnabas. He had a he had an a, 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 an accountability. He had a brother that help him, right? So we all need it. Even Apostle Paul needed it. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly in Damascus the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and out and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord and disputed against the Hellenists, the Greek speaking Jews, Hellenists. But they attempted to kill him and when they and the brethren found out they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus. Watch this. Tarsus is where he's from. Then the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. Then they had peace and walked in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And they were multiplied. So here we go. We sit there and we think that, that just because we've been called and there is a calling within the call. And then we and we receive the Holy Spirit. We got the indwelling in the Holy Spirit. And we could be filled, but we're not sent yet. And we could push people away from God quicker than we could put people to God, right? And this is something I had to learn for myself. This is how I'm speaking from experience, right? I go out there. And this is why God has not sent me back to the city where uh, all this, the city where I was in darkness and living that life. Is uh, I have to wait for him to send me if I'm supposed to go, right? I have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And if I'm not meant to go, then I'm just going to push people away from God, right? We have to be led by the Spirit. And so here we go. We're going to get to Acts 11. It says, The news of these things came to the ears of church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas once again to go as far as Antioch. And he came and had seen the grace of God, and he was glad and encouraged them all that was with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great many were added to the Lord. Why? Because he, his presence, he had the, he had the power of God in him, Barnabas, right? Full of Holy Spirit, right? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was empowered, and he was full of faith, right? And then Barnabas departed to Tarsus, where Saul's at, Paul. To seek Saul, ready? And when he heard and found him, when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For it was that for a whole year they assembled the church and taught many great, uh, a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christian in Antioch. This is the first Christian church is in Antioch in Syria, right? That's the first Christian church in it. I, and uh, he, right here, what he, Barnabas took him under the wing again. They sent him away because he's causing drama. And when they sent him away, the church was edified and they walked in peace and comfort the Holy Spirit. And the Lord added, right? Because right? he was he wasn't sent yet. He was in he was we see the indwelling, he was filled, but he wasn't empowered in, in, in when it comes to uh, uh being sent by the Holy Spirit, right? He wasn't wrong in what he was saying, it was the coming out wrong. Because they they seen him as Saul, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Right, and he wasn't coming out with grace. He was just bold, like, like, and we could push people away with that. And he and Barnabas had to take him under the wing again. Like, come on, let's let's teach, let's teach. Let me show you to walk in grace. Let me show. Let's teach in grace, right? You know, don't just shove it down people's throats. Because Saul was a Pharisee, and a certain Pharisee, certain. Most of the Pharisees, right, the ones that were really walking according to the law, not the ones that were ripping people off at the temple, right? There were still good people within the Pharisees. They just seen it wrong, like Nicodemus, right? And so Saul was part where they, they believed that when everybody in Israel followed the Torah, the laws perfectly, the Messiah will come. 
And this is why he was so gun ho He was zealous for the Lord, forcing people. Man, you got to follow the law. You got to follow the law. And so his uh, theology, as we would say now, is that if we all do the Torah, we all follow all the laws perfectly, then the Messiah will come. Right? And so this is why he didn't believe in Jesus in the Messiah in the way. But when he had the revelation, and that's when he received the grace. And that's when he was like, dude, I see it now. Right? He fasted and prayed. And he got his calling. And 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 he was called and he had his calling, but he wasn't sent yet. And so Barnabas had to take him under the wing. And show him how to walk in that grace and teach it with grace. And then we get to Acts 13. Right before 13, uh, 12, Acts 12, 25. Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. When they had fulfilled their ministry, right? And they took John, Mark. Now Acts 13. In the church that was in Antioch, there was a certain prophet and teacher who had been brought up a Herod to Tetrarch and Saul, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the works to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, he laid hands on them, and they sent them away. Now they're sent by the Holy Spirit. Barnabas became an apostle with Paul, or as they would say, Saul. Paul is his Roman name, right? Because Barnabas was a powerful man, and he put Saul on. You think that was orchestrated by God. God is moving people around for a reason, right? So who is your Barnabas? We need a Barnabas in our lives. And we need to read, right? And realize we need to we receive the indwelling. And then Barnabas was sent home. So he had to really get with God, right? He got he was meditating, fasting, right? And and receive, and that's the imply applying the knowledge of God. And and then then he was taken by Barnabas to redirect it with grace. Receive, apply, and redirect in the power of the Holy Spirit with the grace of God. Right? That's 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 the message. Receive, apply, and redirect. Right? Indwelling, the filling, and the empowerment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.